Hi, I'm Fiona from Kids Club English and um, I'm going to talk to you today about jigsaw puzzles and how you can use them uh, to teach English. So um, if you'd rather read about this rather than watch me, <laughs> um, you, can, you can do that on our website. I've got a blog post about this um, and I'll cover most of the, the same material. So basically, um, a lot of people, I do include jigsaw activities in quite a lot of my activity packs um, but sometimes teachers ask me you know like well that's great good fun but how can you use that to to teach English um, well I use them in a lot of different ways I use them in opening routines um, I use them in team games and I, I use them as craft activities so quite often I get the students to make their own jigsaws um, the way I conduct the activities depends on whether I'm working on receptive skills or on productive skills. Um, so I think they give you lots of opportunities to talk in English um, using the target language that you're focusing on. Um, I think that you can give clues that use the target language to help them complete the puzzles. Um, you can ask them questions about things in the image. Um, and uh, once they're completed, I think that they're a really nice um, activity to take home to the parents or the families, and that just helps bring English outside the classroom, which is what I'm really looking for um, a lot of the time. Um, so what types of jigsaw puzzles? So most, most people usually think about, well, what I knew when I was growing up, like they're sort of irregular shaped, different parts that fit together, kind of complicated. The jigsaw puzzles I use are really quite simple. Um, so basically consists of one image with vertical lines down it. And um, that's one, so basically they cut into strips. And other ones I do, they still have vertical lines, but they'll be you know, divided into rectangles to chop the image up. So, um, you know, you can see my examples, but um, of course you could do this really with any image if you've got any kind of colouring worksheet or something just make it a bit more interesting by turning it into a jigsaw. Um, so I said I use these in opening routines. Yeah, um, with the very young ones, especially at the start of the school year, I find that they can be quite nervous. Um, they don't know you yet um, and even when they do, sometimes like the kids that are three, four, sometimes they're just very attached to their families, like a lot of the, the, the groups I teach, they've come from playing in the park, you know, they're not really wanting to go into a classroom, they want to carry on playing at the park. So, um, you know, for me, it's really important to try and capture their attention and engage them straight away. Um, so um, you can either at the door have your jigsaw puzzle segments, like I say mine are usually strips or rectangles so it's easy for you to hold, and um, the each child takes a jigsaw piece and then they, you know, you can obviously depends on how many kids you've got coming into the class, if you've got a lot of kids maybe you don't have a very long conversation there, but you know, you've, you've got a few seconds, turn over the piece, you know, like, oh, what's that? Oh, look, it's a monkey, wow! And uh, the child goes to um, to a, a place where you've designated that they go. So um, with these, either I go to a table, so all the kids end up around um, the table with their jigsaw pieces, um, or we go to the floor where we go, we do our circle activities. Um, and so as a class together, then you can help them make the puzzle. Again, using as much language as, as you're wanting them to acquire, you know, so we give them clues, you know, like, oh, look, oh, um, you've got the monkey's head, you know, what's that? Oh, you've got the body. Oh, let's see, you know, and uh, make the puzzle that way. Or um, focusing on numbers, you know, so I've got, with some of mine, I have um, the numerals down the sides, one to ten. So it can be that, like, oh, who's got, who's got number three? Oh, you've got number three. Oh, look, three. And where's four? You know, um, and build it that way. Um, uh, then, so that's kind of like an opening type routine you could do. Um, I 
also can sometimes do it as a as a treasure hunt activity um, in a similar way to how I use the matching cards which are also in our activity packs. Um, so instead of holding the pieces at the door you would before you open the door to greet the children um, put them face down on the floor and um, as each child comes in they get to pick a jigsaw piece up and take it to the table. You know you could make it more exploratory than that. You could hide them in nooks and crannies. I'm using a space that isn't my own. I'm just borrowing it for a short period of time. So I don't really want the kids to go raking around all the things in the classroom. But, um, you know, you could do that if, if you've got um, more freedom with how you can use your space. Um, so once they're all together, you know, and you've completed your, your jigsaw together, I think they're in a perfect position then. They've, they've come in as as these kind of, you know, separate entities in their own worlds and you've, you've brought them together as a class around this puzzle and then you can focus their attention um, and, and you can work on the language that's, a, that's there in the puzzle. Um, so one easy way to do this is with a song. Um, so I sometimes use um, One Little Finger from Super Simple songs you know so it's one little finger one little finger one little finger tap 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 you can follow the link below and <laughs> um, but um, basically it just ends with point your finger up point your finger down point it to and then you say what you want so something red oh what's that or point it to uh the well i've said the monkey the monkey uh point it to um the head you know um and you can just have a quick revision of, of body parts there or, or um, animals or, or what you've introduced them to or the numbers. Okay, um, and then of course move on to your next activity. Um, how else do you use this then? In team games, you know, so not at the start of a lesson but maybe they've read a story um, and now as we know, with, with, as teachers of very young learners especially, um, we're talking a lot of the time, we're kind of orchestrating a lot of the time because you're trying to expose them to as much English as possible and so that they can hear English and eventually, you know, start producing it themselves spontaneously. Um, it's important that you do integrate some kind of group activities uh, or pair activities as well. So um, jigsaws can be really useful for this. Um, so in in their groups, um, you know, you can, it's a great time for you to, to monitor actively, ask them about things in the pictures, ask them what they can, what they can see, uh, help them as I said at the beginning you can give them clues using the target language so they can help them complete the puzzle um, you know but uh, just some tips for how to manage uh, the activity um, try to make sure that you give each learner the same amount of jigsaw pieces like you know it's not fun if, if one student is kind of dominating and has gathered in all of the jigsaw pieces and some poor soul is left, you know, on their own with nothing. Um, you know, you don't want that. So like, it's it's quite good practice to to make a, demonstrate to them about handing out the pieces. So there's one, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. Um, so um, they can all have the same amount of pieces and encourage them to work together. Very young kids, are still learning how to share. Um, so, you know, um, uh, that's one way you can kind of avoid some of the problems. Um, think about the space as well. Okay, so if they're, they're just little people, um, if they're sitting in a row, um, you're not going to, they're not going to be able to physically move to, to see and complete the, the piece, the puzzle properly. You know, it could just be simple, like getting one person to come around to the front, but just think about the space um, that you're asking them to do this in. Um, as I said, monitor, encourage them. Now, if one, one group finishes, what do you do? Well, you, again, you can prompt them, ask them questions. You can designate, if, well, another example, another, get them to play a game with it, you know, so it could be 
that they choose something in the picture and then the other ones have to guess. Um, most basic, you, you demonstrate it to them first. So like, ah, okay. Mm, close your eyes, okay. And then they say, what is it? Is it, uh, is it the monkey? Is it the parrot? Is it, or um, do like, I spy, you know, so, I like to say I can see because I think that's more useful. So I'd say I can see something yellow. Is it the sun? No, it isn't. Is it the cat? No, it isn't. Is it the duck? Yes, it is. You know, and then um, other students can can take the role of the teacher as you go to the other groups. Um, you can also get the, the students, of course, to help the other groups like complete their jigsaws. Um, so yeah, um, try to make sure that you're promoting as much language use as possible. Um, with, as I, I said at the beginning, I like the students to make these crafts. So generally, I would let them play. I prepare my own versions for them to play in, in groups. Um, but then we would move on and I would let them make their own jigsaw, either in that class or in the subsequent class. Um, with the very youngest ones, I usually don't have them cut up the, the task in class, just because I don't really want them to lose any pieces. I mean, you've probably got better ideas about how to, how to manage that, but um, you know, they get excited, they want to take it out, show show mum, show dad, show granny, and uh, you know, if they lose pieces then it's not very good. So like, plus I'd like the parents to be involved at home. So um, we do a colouring activity in the classroom uh, using different um, dictation techniques our story retelling techniques. You can check that out on um, the blog post that I'll put in the, the link below about how to use um, craft. So there's a, a list of different dictation techniques you could try. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the youngest ones. Um, with, uh, so I'm thinking maybe around age five and upwards. Um, one thing I like to do is I pre-cut the pieces before class, black and white, and um, keep them in same group sets. And then I, I create a treasure hunt activity. So I put them, all these pieces around the room, and again, using different techniques, um, dictation techniques, then I, I tell them which piece of the jigsaw to look for, and then they take it and they stick it on an A3 piece of paper. So I show them my example, so I stick it at the top. So then they've got like number one, the first piece at the top of the puzzle. And then you'd carry on the next piece and then they go and find the next piece and so on until they have stuck the jigsaw. So they've completed the jigsaw, but they've stuck it on a piece of A3 paper. Um, and then of course they can, they can color it. Um, I generally, would let them, if we've done the, the cutting and pasting in class, I let them do the colouring at home. And again, I tell the parents what they've done and um, try and encourage the parents to work with them at home. The kids can cut up the jigsaw again at home um, and play with it there. Okay, so um, a lot of the, the things that I've mentioned so far have focused mainly on receptive skills and giving kids the chance to hear that target language again in different ways. Now, if you're wanting to work on productive skills, if you feel that they've had enough exposure to this language and now it's time for them to, to play um, with it themselves, another way I, I do jigsaws is to cut the pieces into different segments um, and have them in the same set groups. But instead of putting them around the room, I'll have them in front of me wherever I'm sitting. I like to sit on the floor a lot, um, but you know, um, at your table, your desk, whatever, one part of the room, but you're there. And the, the students come up one by one, work at their own pace and ask for the things, that the parts that they need. Um, so, you know, 
they they can ask you for by number, you know, can I have four please, can I have five please, or they can ask you um, for um, part of the, the image that, that they, they know that they're making. Um, so with my teacher as a monster, you know, it's body parts as well, so can I have the hands please, and you give them the hands, and if, if they don't know that vocabulary, because they're still experimenting with it, then, you know, you've got the chance to give it to them again, don't you? So like, oh, okay, the hands, yeah, the hands, okay, so here's the hands. Uh, <clears throat> um, so it kind of creates that kind of um, opportunity for them too. Um, what else about jigsaws? Well, um, I think that the final thoughts about these is that you need to be careful that if you're doing a craft activity with them that you know, you're aware of how capable they are to do different things. Like, I've made mistakes, of course. Like, um, that teacher's a monster puzzle. I cut that into the 20, uh, the version with 20, 20 different pieces and had those scattered around the room. And, you know, they they just, the, these were five-year-olds, but quite um, young five-year-olds. And they really struggled to get the pieces to match up um, when they were sticking it on their A3 piece, piece of paper. So, you know, if I'd cut it into 10, 10 pieces, that's no problem, that's easy for them. So it's just being aware of of, uh, of that. Um, you know, it's not just the English skills, it's, it's you know, the whole child that we're, we're developing as young learner teachers. So, um, and um, be wary if you're doing group activities that you don't have too many kids in the same, working in the same group. Um, you know, uh, three, I think three is really my max. You could have three or four, but um, if you've got any more than that, then there's always going to be someone who's left out, who doesn't have something to hold or, or isn't able to take part um, as much as the others. So um, keep the numbers down. Um, make sure that you've done a model, um, you know, so you've got a model to show them, uh, show them what they're going to do. Um, that will just help engage them more, like with what they're that they're going to get to do it. I had this the other day, and I did one, and they were like, "Are we going to do that?" You know, <laughs> then they get really excited and um, about it. So have a model for those reasons, but also just to so they know what they're expected to produce, um, especially if you're doing it as a as a craft activity like that, where they're sticking and pasting bits. Um, so. Anyway, I've been talking a lot. <laughs> uh, there's a lot you can do with jigsaw puzzles um, to teach English. Um, and so, yeah, have a go at making your own or feel free to check out um, the jigsaws that we've got in our activity facts on kidsclubenglish.com. Okay, thank you very much and I'll be back with another video soon.